The man adjusted his fedora as he collapsed into the hotel room. The woman with him stumbled and laughed as they pushed through the door, unaware she'd finished their last bottle of Cabernet Sauvignon alone. He pulled her into an embrace, teased her with a long kiss, then whispered in her ear, where's the switch? Her hand slid along the wall until light filled the room. He gauged her lack of coordination. She tossed her purse onto the laminate nightstand a little too hard, then teetered and almost fell while kicking off her heels. He nodded to himself, loosened his tie, and eased toward the bed. Come here. His most charming smile slid over his face, and he extended his hand. I can't wait anymore. She met his gaze through lowered lashes and reached back to the zipper of her dress. No, my love, I want to undress you. She ambled toward him, head tilted, and raised her hand to his. Humming a snippet of the last song they danced to at dinner, he twirled her in a slow circle, then drew her into his arms, her back to his chest. A soft moan escaped her lips as he kissed her neck and ran his hands down the sides of her body, then trailed a hand back up the smooth aubergine silk to cradle her breast. She gasped as he caressed her nipple. He pulled his tie past her cheek, smooth fingers stroking her skin as they slid by, and his teeth tugged at her earlobe. He gathered the thin, blonde hair off the nape of her neck with a single finger, brushed his lips against her exposed skin, then paused to drink in the woodsy notes of her perfume mingling with the floral scent of her hair. His hand slipped from her breast to her elbow, and he pressed her closer, closing his eyes to relish the softness and warmth of her abdomen. Ouch, darling, that's too tight. She gave a throaty laugh. He made no move to loosen the grip. With a pickpocket's light touch, he wound the tie, now draped around her neck, through the fingers of his free hand. Then he twisted with one fierce, swift pull. She tried to call out, but only managed a hoarse hiss. His wrist wrenched the joined ends a second time with a practiced swivel, then a third, driving the fabric deep into her flesh. Her body tensed and jerked, seeking any escape. First, she tried to pull away, then pushed back against him. Futile movements, with her arms pinioned against her sides. When she tried to kick backward, he smiled. He'd positioned her mere inches from the bed, without enough distance to gain purchase and damage him. She tried to push off from the bed frame, desperate to angle enough leverage, and failed. A sublime sense of power surged through him. He pulled his attention from her struggle to the side of her face. He memorized her expression, the panic in her brown eyes, let the faint sound of her stifled grunts imprint their melody on his brain. Then he shifted to the delicious tension in her muscles and waited for it to drain away. His signal that her oxygen had run out and her world had dimmed. He remained in place for several minutes after she went limp to make sure. He closed his eyes again and used the time to savor the weight of her limp body in his arms, and his complete control of her fate. You danced at my command, ate and drank according to my whims, rose to a fever pitch of desire because I willed it, and now, finally, you die, and you never suspected. His erection pushed against his trousers, he twirled her body around to face him and held her right hand up and out.